Hello collectors and welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2000 Millennium. This is the first figure to be released in the line that does not have an exact film counterpart. Though it may be unique in nature, is it unique enough to add into your collection? Let's take a look and find out. The sculpt of this Godzilla design really communicates the idea of a large, powerful kaiju that can destroy cities in an instant. Once again, Yuji Sakai is brought back to the SH Monster Arts line to sculpt this Godzilla, and the quality that one would expect from this line is definitely kept here. As you can guess, and as you can see, the bumps and the ridges on this Godzilla, even up here on the dorsal plates, they are plentiful, and the proportions on this particular design are absolutely wondrous. For the most part, everything on this Godzilla is large. The feet, the tail, the hands, the neck, that's pretty wide, and most obvious on this guy, the dorsal plates. They are huge. It really feels like an amazing combination of multiple Godzilla designs from years past, all packed into one object, but updated. All of the fine details that would be on this Godzilla, such as the ears, the teeth, and even this design's infamous tongue are kept, and it just looks absolutely amazing. As a note, the figure overall is made of a softer plastic, so when you go to pick it up and it may feel say a little squishy, or if you're moving a dorsal plate around, just know that there's nothing wrong with your figure. That's just how it is. And that is definitely going to play a part in the articulation. I'll bring that up later. The paint on this Godzilla is pretty much great. If you take a close look at Godzilla, you're going to be able to see that they do respect some of the fine features of this Godzilla. Just an example here, they have a nice brown spray here on the chest, on the kneecaps, which is pretty cool. The nails, the feet, they look great. There's no paint slop. Even true on the hands. The dorsal plates are this nice purplish magenta color. Personally, I would prefer a pearlescent or even maybe a metallic finish to them, but what we get is just fine enough too. The eyes on this guy, really, they're pretty cool. They really pull out the idea of the 1962 suit, and thankfully, there's no misalignment problems that could happen with this guy compared to his 1994 brethren that we got from the first release in the line. An issue that I have with the paint, though, is indeed found in the mouth. As you can see here, it just seems like there's a lot of paint going on, and it just seems like there's a lot of random streaks. You can even see where the tongue normally would be on the other Godzillas because that's sculpted into the mouth. It's just streaky. I'm not a big fan of it, but considering we have the articulated tongue and Bandai is really overall trying to push the articulation and the sculpt design, and they're looking to just move forward with what they can do, it is a bit forgivable for a first attempt. Something else that's also interesting is that though this Godzilla is pretty much green, you can see on the promotional shots and even some in-hand pictures that some other users may have, depending on the lighting situation, he can actually look kind of gray. Don't know how it happened, don't know whether or not that was an intentional, but it's pretty cool. If you know how to manipulate your light source, you can get Godzilla to look differently. So overall, for sculpt and paint on this particular release, you're definitely going to expect the Monster Art Standard here. Amazing. So what moves on Godzilla and how does it move? The head and the neck, ball joints. Typical ball joints. You're going to be able to get Godzilla to pretty much look in whatever direction you want. Left, right, and down. Yeah, unfortunately, because of the large size of the dorsal plates, he really can't look up. Definitely can look forward, can't look up. As usual is what you would expect on a Godzilla figure from the SH Monster Arts line. The mouth is indeed on a ball joint. But what is new to this Godzilla figure that is not on others is that the tongue 
is articulated. Yes, it is indeed on a hinge joint in the mouth. So you can move the tongue up and down, and you can have it in the normal default pose that the maquette is definitely known for. It's a wild tongue. So these shoulders, they are attached to the body on two different joints. They're attached to a piece of sculpt on a ball joint, but interestingly enough, and you can see them right here, there is a hinge system for the arms inside the cavity of the body. So you can get a better range of movement of the arms for moving them outwards and inwards. Do take note that if you overextend the hinges, you're going to get portions of the sculpt to actually pop out of the cavity of the body, and you're going to get big holes. You're basically where his armpits are. And take it from me, it's a pain to fix it, and it doesn't look too great. Unfortunately, Godzilla does not have a bicep swivel on either arm, but he does have elbow swivels. It leads me to believe that these are ball joints at the elbows, so not exactly hinges. But you do get the hinge motion from the elbows. The wrist joints are actually very similar to Ultra Act and Figure Arts joints because they feature a double swivel combo which enables you to articulate the wrists in whichever ways you'd like, but also the hand is attached to them on a ball joint. So, long story short, for the arms of Godzilla, if you can think of a pose, you're going to be able to do it. The torso articulation, the ab crunch to be more specific, it's on a ball joint. So you're going to be able to move him however you please, get him to look down, but much like the neck, because there is a large dorsal plate in the way, you're not going to be able to help him look up any with this. So, again, left, right, down, you're good to go. Now, for the legs on Godzilla. The thighs are attached at the hips on a ball joint, and you have some pretty good range. You basically know what to expect here in the articulation department, but something else that Bandai thought of is that, take a look. You have the legs spread apart, and it's just not showing up on camera here, but it is on the other side too. There is a piece of sculpt that prevents a gap from showing. I think they learned something from Burning Godzilla. A little too many complaints there, huh? The knee system on this Godzilla is actually a bit interesting, I think, in that not only is it a hinge system, it does tend to ratchet, but also the actual lower sculpt of the leg, where the shin area is, it's attached on a ball joint. There's another cutaway here on the leg, which is attached on a ball joint, and the feet are attached on a ball joint too. Very, very, very interesting. And finally, something I know that a lot of people are going to be looking forward to once they get their Godzilla, the tail. Starting from here, all the way down to the tip, Yes, even this last little bit here, it's all on ball joints, and they definitely decrease in size as you go down. Pretty much you're going to be able to get whatever pose you'd like out of the tail. I've even seen some very extreme pictures where the tip of the tail went into his mouth. Yeah, you're going to be able to get a lot of cool poses out of it. But unfortunately, because of the soft plastic that is used for Godzilla, the tail does like to pop off at parts. Yeah, luckily because the plastic is soft, it's easy to pop back on. And another thing, see, it likes to pop off. Another thing that I think is because of the soft plastic is you've seen it a little bit in action here, but whenever I lift Godzilla up, the tail is basically right out of the box, loose. Now, on my SH Monster Arts Godzilla 94, the tail is very similar. But with that one, I was basically grabbing with it for the first week and a half after I got it, and I was doing this with it over and over and over again with the hard plastic. This is pretty much like it right out of the box, so that's a little bit disappointing. So the tail, it's long, it's huge, it's awesome, but it does have its drawbacks. Overall, for the articulation of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2000 Millennium, what we get, it's pretty good. You're going to be able to get Godzilla into a lot of different cool poses. You might be able to get him to rider kick if you're creative enough, but there are just a few drawbacks that 
Eh, some might say nitpicky, but I would prefer that this Godzilla is actually, you know, able to look up. And if the tail didn't fall apart as easily as it did, that'd be a little bit better, too. But really, it's a nice step in the right direction, I think. So, what does this Godzilla come with? His own beam effect? Maybe a UFO ship? Some small tanks? Hands? Interchangeable parts for Godzilla 1999? Squat. Goose egg. Zero. Nothing. For $75, this release comes with nothing but the main body. This is all you're getting. <clears throat> yeah. Luckily, though, he is compatible with some other effect parts from previous releases. Here he is with the original Red Spiral Ray that came with the web-exclusive Godzilla effects pack. Here he is with the re-sculpted Red Spiral Ray that came with the Fire Rodan release. And for those that just might be wondering, here is the blue atomic breath that the original Monster Arts Godzilla first production run came with. So, honestly, it's pretty disappointing that this guy comes with nothing. It's just sad because there are other lines that didn't have effect parts, now they're getting them. And there are other lines that have had effect parts, they're still keeping them, while the Monster Arts line gets nothing. So, it's sad to say that he comes with nothing, but thankfully... There are some beam effects from previous releases that can be used with him. A lot of people were wondering exactly how big this Godzilla would be. Thankfully, it's large, but it's not so large that you're not going to be able to have any shelf space for it. First and foremost, here he is alongside a choice large kaiju in the SH Monster Arts line, Biollante. As you can see, he's pretty bulky. He's tall. But, as you can see here, he's not so freakishly tall that he is really out of scale with the rest of the SH Monster Arts line. And, as you can clearly see here, depending on which Showa pieces you have, he may or may not fit in with them at all. Here he is alongside some choice Ultra Act releases. Sadly, still, we do not have a Godzilla that truly mixes and mingles alongside NECA-specific Rim stuff. Yet. And finally, here is Godzilla next to the SH Monster Arts King Kong. And as you can see, that sizing there, that looks pretty awesome for our nice rematch. So, as you can see, this Godzilla, yes, it is bulky, but fortunately, it's not out of scale, really, with the rest of the SH Monster Arts line, and he definitely can sneak into some other displays, depending on how big the figures are. Buy Godzilla now, wait for a sale, skip it entirely? What should you do? There are some drawbacks to this release, such as the wonky tail, the inability to look up, and I think the mouth can look nicer, but aside from that, Godzilla is amazing. The sculpt looks phenomenal, and the articulation is great. The hefty 7499 MSRP tag is admittedly a bit rich for some collectors, but this is a release not to be missed. No effect part really weakens this release for me, but thankfully the parts that come with older releases are definitely usable with this masterpiece. There has been some chatter from collectors that have already dubbed this Monster Arts release as THE Godzilla of the line. That is to say, if they had to pick one of the already released Godzillas to display, this would be THE one not to get boxed up. Honestly, after having this figure in hand and fiddling with it for a little while, there is absolutely no doubt that, despite the drawbacks, this King of the Monster Arts does not deserve to be skipped over by any kaiju collector.